the five kinematics formulas that we learned you last year were G equals D over T, and D F equals D I plus A T, and we had G equals A T squared over G plus D I T, and we had G equals D F plus D I and T over G, and we had D F squared. Now, what I want you to do is on your formula sheet, try and locate if any of these show up. Are they like the first three? Yeah. The first few? <coughs> okay, the first one says dx equals dx not plus Which one does that look like? Second one. Yeah, that one is that equation. Now, what does the little zero mean? Initial. Initial. Why do all three of these have x in them? Essentially what they're saying is they all need to be going in the same direction. So the VF and the VI and the A are all happening in the same line. Whatever direction that line must be, doesn't matter, but they're all in the same line. So if it has a zero, that's initial. If it doesn't have a zero, it's final. So you should be able to translate that into your head to mean that. The next one down we see says x equals x naught plus t and t plus And you say, does that one show up here anywhere? Yeah, that one shows up right there. X they're using for du, which is weird. Now, this tells me basically how far over was I to begin with. Well, normally we just start from zero, so this is normally zero, so it doesn't come into factor very often. And then this is, again, V initial times T, which, hey, that looks just like V initial times T there. And we have the 1 half AT squared, which is just the same as AT squared over 2. So that part's not a whole lot different. And again, the A and the V initial have to be in the same direction. That's why they both have the little x there. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. This is also that equation. And you're saying, what? This equation, the one on the top here, we said that we only use this when we're traveling at a constant. constant velocity. And so you look at here and you say, well, if I'm traveling at a constant velocity, what's my acceleration? Okay, so if my acceleration is zero, and this is usually zero, what's left? D equals VT. So if I just bring the T up next to V, then <laughs> it's the same equation. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so those two are still there, and those work. Then we have... <laughs> the next one down says dx squared equals v x naught squared plus two a x times x. That beautiful equation is really the bottom, the bottom one, and you say, okay, that one is just that one. And so if we, again, have the zero, stands for initial, and if I don't have a zero, it's final. All the x's are just saying this x and this x and this x are just saying that they're all going in the same direction. So the a and the vi and the vf are, you know, they're either all vertical or all horizontal or whatever there. And then, again, they like to use x for d. So this is really d minus d initial. 
but D initial generally we start measuring at zero, so we never used that, so we would just use D. So it's the same thing. So ideally you can kind of visually see these things and and they work out okay. Um, we also, of course, derived from these several modified formulas that we ended up using, especially when we were doing projectile motion. When we had nice projectile motion, of course, we had two types of motion happening at the same time. We had horizontal motion that would be going at a constant velocity, and so we'd use this equation. So this equation ends up down here. If we're looking for d, the t comes up, and we say, okay, so d equals d times t. But since this is going horizontally, we would stick in little h's to remind myself that, yeah, I only want to put in a horizontal displacement. I only want to put a horizontal velocity. But that's coming out of that same concept. Up and down, of course, we're not traveling at a constant speed. We are accelerating, so we can use any of these things. And we did use many of them. The one that we used very often was this one. And if I'm starting from the highest point down, or if I am just going straight sideways like I'm rolling off of the table, and if I roll off the table, then ah, I call it a parabolic trajectory. But initially, I was going how fast? Up and down. Zero. So we can modify this into a vertical equation. So this would turn into vertical displacement. The acceleration, if I'm going up and down, is caused by gravity. gravity. And so this is initial velocity, but again, it's only the initial vertical velocity. So we modified it in that way to talk about up and down motion. But we're saying, okay, so here, if I'm falling off of a table, then initially my VVI, my initial vertical velocity, is zero because I have some horizontal velocity, but I don't have any vertical velocity, which means this part will cancel out because zero times time is zero. So we're not adding anything there. So if I have this and I want to solve for time, then the two is going to come up, the G is going to come down. So I'm going to end up with two EV over g equals t squared, so to just get t, I'm going to square root that. And again, this only works when I'm falling down. down, so we call this the t down equation. If I wanted to find out how long time it took to come up to the highest point, then I would use this equation, and I would solve for t. I know I'm going to go up until I stop, so the VF is going to be zero, so if I want to find the time up equation, again, we just algebra this for time, and we're going to get zero minus my VVI over, again, my acceleration is due to gravity. So it would end up looking like that. So we had those equations that help me find time to go with those other concepts. And of course, if we modify the bottom formula, we could add verticals to anything here. The A could turn into a gravity and your B initial and B final, again, would be um, vertical only. So as long as you modify from there, that works with projectile motion. Um, the other day we talked about how A is going to equal mu G if friction is my only thing acting on me. And if you weren't with me last year, you don't know why we got that equation. And the way we got that equation, of course, is we know that F equals MA, that this is the net force, the sum of all the forces that are acting on your formula sheet. It will say, it will look like that. This Greek letter sigma stands for the sum of in mathematical, so the sum of the forces is the net force equals MA. So if we're solving for A, of course, we get A is F net over M. But our net force, we said if we're just sliding across the floor and there's nothing pushing or pulling on this except for gravity, then the F net is equal to the FF, which is still over M. And then you look on your formula sheet and they should tell you that 
the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force, and they had absolute values around all of these. <coughs> so the friction force is equal to the normal force times mu. Mu is the coefficient of sliding friction, that's how smooth or how rough the surface was. And the normal force is how hard are these surfaces being pushed together. So if I'm just sliding the calculator across the table, the only thing shoving the calculator into the table is the weight of the calculator. So whatever is on top is shoving down, the table has to push up just as hard, so the weight third. So yes, this turns out to just be basically the weight of the object. So that's the same as saying umg is the friction force. So up here for friction force, I'm gonna replace that with mu mg, but again, I'm still over m. So look what happens to the m. So this is how I got a equals mu g. But again, a equals mu g only works if friction force is my only force, therefore my net force. If there's anything else pushing or pulling on it, then that doesn't work. Now, again, you can derive that from all the formulas that are on the formula page, or you can just remember a super simple formula and that can help you in what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, that kind of helps with hopefully getting your brain to remember certain things that we learned before, which will help us break into what we're doing with the new stuff. So, um, 